What up everybody and welcome back to another episode of Funboxing with Will. I'm your host Will with H2O Co Film and Photo and today we're going to be doing another EDC review on a pocket knife that I just picked up from a collection. It is a newer model from uh, Kershaw called the Uridium and it is a budget EDC, a budget friendly EDC knife uh, that I picked up and there's a lot of interesting things about this so we're going to be taking a closer look at this knife. So let's get into that review today guys. Alrighty, now before we get into the review, just as always, I want to thank anybody who stopped in today just to check out this video or if you subscribe to the channel. If you like seeing EDC knife content or tech review kind of content, this is the place to be. Uh, I put out, I try to put out a new video every week. I, I'm trying to build up my EDC knife playlist currently. I do a lot of tech reviews on this channel as well. But if you find any of this information at all informative or you like the content, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. It really helps out the channel. And uh, turn on those bell notifications to get notified when I put out new content. I try to put out a new video about once a week. But uh, other than that, we're going to be doing a, a review on the Uridium like I mentioned today. So let's get over to the top down setup and check out this knife at a closer angle. Alrighty everybody, now that we're over here at the top down setup, we can take a closer look at this new offering from Kershaw, uh, the Uridium. It's, um, it's a pretty interesting knife. From what I am aware, it is the first, or one of the first, uh, attempts at an access or a lock bar style lock from Kershaw Knives. Uh, I could be wrong, but I just, I'm unaware of any other models that they have with lock bars on them that predate this. Uh, but again, I'm not sure, I'm not an expert. So uh, it is made with aluminum handle material. Um, it's really well done. It's kind of got like this really slight orange peel texture to it. Uh, the anodizing on it is, I feel pretty solid on it. Uh, I already seem to have gotten a couple scratches here on it, just carrying it in my pocket over the last couple days, but uh, I haven't really tried to clean it out that much either. So we'll check it out after I clean it up and see if these get removed or if they're actually stuck on there forever uh, it comes in with a d2 blade steel which actually isn't too bad for the price point on this budget branded knife i actually even think that i saw on metal complex's channel he released a video saying that this was probably the best budget knife ever um is if, if that's what i saw if that's correct that's what i think i saw on his channel but um it, for d2 for the price point it's it's fine it was a 68 dollars knife i believe is what i paid for this plus shipping from blade hq uh it's got very minimal hardware as you can tell it's got the one pivot uh screw and then these two backspacer screws that you can't really see because of the backspacer and i really like the contrast of the bronze uh, anodization on the backspacer it offers a lanyard loop and an okay it's nothing tech great uh the tension is pretty good on the the pocket clip here it's pretty tight uh don't think it'll be a pocket shredder once it's broken in a little bit and i like the fact that they have recessed screws on this as well um so they did a really good job there and they made it ambidextrous so you can swap out that clip um to either side with the the lock bar being ambidextrous itself so this is a very very um easily operated it runs on bearings it's very easily operated one hand which I, as you've heard in other videos is essential for my edc carry uh, i think it comes in at close to well we'll do the measurements first here we've come in with a closed length here of uh four point let's say four point four and a half inches exactly on that closed length there and then we're going to have a full open length of i think somewhere around eight inches let's see here it's going to be uh, 7.9 inches, so just under 8 inches with a cutting blade length of 3 and a half or 3 and 3 quarters of an inch. I'm going to go 3 and 3 quarters of an inch there on um, 
the blade length there. So uh, it's 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 a really interesting piece. I like the way that it's constructed. It's got this like little kind of finger groove here for the guard where you can put your hand on it. I would consider this to be a medium to full size knife. I have a large glove hand and as you can see, I can get a full four finger purchase on the knife with having a little bit of pommel stuck out the back end. So I definitely do think that this is a, um, medium to full size knife that most people would consider it to be. Uh, the jimping on the back of the blade here is kind of weird. It's just uh, three little cutouts for the jimping and it's very minimal. Um, you can feel it with your thumb, you can pick it up, you can feel it. It just doesn't seem like it covers enough surface area for me. I would have liked to have seen a little bit more jimping, maybe even laid back further into where the uh, thumb studs are right here. Um, you know, or even a little bit up forward on the blade a little bit more. But it's overall, it's got good ergos on it. Uh, the weight of the blade is going to come in today at, let's see here, I'm thinking four and a half ounces. Let's see if I'm right. Nope, 3.324 ounces. So even lighter than I thought. Um, yeah, it's, it's a pretty lightweight blade. And I carried it for a couple days so far, and in the pocket, the profile is very slim. It's a very slim knife, so it's very comfortable to carry, and it doesn't really get in the way. I, I always had these problems with these bigger knives that would want to go to put my hand in my pocket to get my keys or my change or whatever, um, the knife being in the way. And and I, that's why I like slimmer knives like this kind of, um, and, and it definitely doesn't cause those types of problems. I can put my hand in and out of my pocket in most of my jeans without even noticing that this is there for the most most part. Uh, it is a fairly slicey blade. It has a awesome geometry in my opinion. I love draw point blades. Uh, it's part of the reason I picked this one up. It has a uh, full flat grind on the uh, draw point blade. I would say 70% of the way up the blade where it comes to the swedge right here. And then it's just this nice point. Um, but it still has a little bit of you know meat behind the edge. So we're going to do a blade stock thickness right now. And Oh, sorry. I bumped the camera there there guys but we will do a blade th stock thickness right now and the blade stock thickness is going to come in at oh you know what this is not set up correctly there we go the blade stock thickness is going to come in at 660 thousandths of an inch which is fairly thin i would consider this definitely a slicey blade geometry um, and behind the edge we're going to come in at 250 thousandths of an inch so definitely a slicey blade geometry as i've said in other videos i believe anything under around 500 thousandths of an inch is fairly slicey depending on the blade geometry itself but in the most part i feel like that's a slicier blade profile in general um, for comparisons we're going to here put it up next to the ontario Ontario Rat. Uh, there it is next to the Ontario Rat. Uh, here it is next to the Benchmade Griptilian for size reference. And as I said, I definitely feel like this is, um, it is a large medium knife. For a medium knife, it's large, but for a large knife, it's not that large. So it is borderline large medium in my mind. Uh, there it is next to the 8020.5. Uh, just for kicks and giggles, we'll put it in next to the Inkosi here. So here it is next to the uh, Spy, or I'm sorry, Chris Reeve Inkosi. And if you'll notice, they do kind of share a very simplistic profile with the Inkosi here. Uh, I think that's another really good thing to the appeal visually to this knife. Um, it just, it is very visually appealing there. So, so definitely for size comparisons, as I said, I think it's a medium sized knife. It's, it's something that is all around, um, it, it's been a decent EDC carry so far. The one issue that I had with it when I first got this out of the box was immediately I noticed that there was a bit of blade play and a bit of lock rock which is kind of from seeing the video on Metal Complex's channel and how much he enjoyed the knife and talked about the action. I'm guessing that mine wasn't uh, the standard. This mine was probably a defect or something from the factory. Uh, so I'm not going to judge the model over the one 
the one issue I had with it. But uh, when I got it, there was a lot of blade play, and not just blade play, but there was actual lock rock. So it was it was wiggling a little bit side to side and up and down. And so I went to adjust the pivot, and I found really quickly that they had put in permanent thread block lock of some type on there. Um, it was when I finally did heat it up with a soldering iron. I, I heated it up and then finally uh, took out the screw and cleaned it off with some rubbing alcohol. Uh, it appeared to be some type of a white um, paste that had been on there, Loctite or something. And, and then I put the screw back in and tightened it down a little bit and it got rid of all of the blade play. So now there's no more blade play, but there is still a very, very minute amount of lock rock on this model. And the funny thing was that when I called Kershaw to ask about that, um, and, and just to, just to, I actually, the first reason I called was to find out whether or not they, the type of thread locker they put on their knives, because I wanted to know before I took it apart and if I was going to damage it or if I needed to heat it up. I kind of assumed I did it anyways, just common sense, but I wanted to double check and find out more information. So I called them, I explained the issue that I had received from the, the knife out of the box, and the woman I spoke with actually told me that because of the inherent design of the lock bar, locking mechanism that there's always going to be a minute amount of lock rock or blade play in the blade and i i kind of had to chuckle because i know that's not true because i have very I, I have a huge collection of knives and a lot of them have lock bar style locks and not a single one of them has any blade play or lock rock in them so the fact that she thought that this lock style inherently uh made the lock have blade play or lock rock made me wonder what the people at kershaw on the phone and if they even actually know what they're talking about about the products um and they're just not trying to do a warranty maybe i i don't know if that was the case i'm not going to say that was the case but it kind of felt like she just didn't want to deal with a warranty claim so she told me that you know that was the way the product was supposed to be out of the box but you know it nonetheless i was able to fix the issue for the most part like 99 percent of the way i fixed the issue and the little tiny amount of lock rock that is left in the knife although i do not like it at all um it's something i can live with just because this doesn't seem like one of the knives that i'll carry in my seven day rotation anytime soon uh but it is something that i do feel is a dependable light lock uh, I do feel it is a dependable lock, even with that slight, slight amount of lock rock that is in the knife. And I feel like it's a dependable knife for an EDC carry. So uh, I think they actually did a really good job for the most part with this one from Kershaw. I think they knocked it out the park, and I can't wait to see what's around the corner from them. Uh, I like it to see when companies get innovative and they actually listen to their market and and they take in some information from the people the consumers who actually buy these products and then they adapt to what the consumer needs maybe that shows that they actually care about their product and their customer base and it's just something that i value in a customer in, in a company so uh, i don't usually do a lot of videos on kershaw's just because i don't have very many of them in my collection but like i said i would definitely love to see more like this in the future uh, just, you know, new innovative things that they're trying out. And uh, the, the designer on this one, um, I'm not sure who the designer on this knife is. I'll look it up and I'll put it up here in the, in the video. Um, as well as in the description, I will link this knife. So if you want to pick this knife up from Blade HQ, you, I think it's at the time of this video, I'm pretty sure it's still in stock. So you can go check that out. Uh, other than that, I think that's about it for today's video, guys. So we're going to get back over to that desktop setup so that we can finish up this video. Alrighty, everybody. Well, that's it for today's review. Uh, like I said earlier, if you found any of this information at all informative or you liked the video, please hit that like and subscribe button. Turn on those bell notifications to get notified when I put out new content. And uh, until next time, guys, I hope you guys have a great day. Stay safe. But above all, stay creative, my friends. We need more of that in this world, especially now. Until next time.